going to take those same notes. Remember that those are only four notes, A, B, C sharp, and D. We only played A for the last time. Now we're going to go the octave lower. So C sharp is a high three. That's the one we were talking about where you have to reach up a little higher with your third finger. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that, John? Got it. <laughs> okay, so we'll have Bethany point it out again. So we're going to start C sharp. And when we get to the D, notice you have to use your pinky because you run out of fingers. And so that's important. And that's something that just takes a while. And you'll also notice how close the pinky and the ring finger are together and how important it is to have good hand position. We're meant to talk about that right away, but that's something that's really important to get half steps. Okay, one, two, ready, here's the C sharp. D. C sharp. D. Back to C sharp. D. Back to C sharp. D. Okay. Yeah, so that's you can see it's exactly the same notes. So I think we'll have Bethany come back and we'll each play, one of us will play it high, one of us will play it low, and you'll hear how it sounds. It sounds good together. We're playing the same notes, we're just playing different octaves. Um, you take the high note. You take the high note. <laughs> you take the high note. <laughs> <roll. laughs> we'll <laughs> there you go. So it's basically like a man and a lady singing. They're singing the same notes, just different octaves, sounds good together. Um, that takes a little practice to get your pinky and your uh, to cooperate with that, but that's a really good exercise to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little, that's right. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, I think we'll all just try that. Let's, let's start on 41 and we'll, um, let's find our C-sharp note first of all. I'll play it, or Bethany can play it. Can playing it, it doesn't sound quite right, it's because you're playing it too low. Usually you'll have to go higher than what you think. So that's where that's where it's a little bit higher. Still higher. Go a little higher. The other way higher means towards the bridge. So so a little bit higher yeah. So a little bit higher. That's pretty good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. He's just got his guitar along with it. <laughs> oh, that's, that's fine. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh, no. So, you, you can just, just feel free to okay. do whatever. <laughs> um, we'll all just try that. So, I think everybody has their C sharp. Okay, I'll give us a four count. One, two, three, four. C sharp. C sharp. C sharp. D. C sharp. D. And we ended with our first finger. That that was the A. I am um, so you can see where that um, may take a little practice, but it's worth it in the end. And one of the big reasons we want to play all those notes on the same string, like, for example, we could have played the D open, and you might think, why didn't we just do that? It's because we want to do some double strings. And so if you're playing your pinky D, now we've got the option of playing our sharp with our second finger to get some harmony. And that's what we do on line 49. Bethany and I will just play that together. Line 49 is exactly the same as line 17, those eight measures. And so they're just an octave difference. Um, I'll have Bethany play the measure 17 starting, and I'll start with measure 49. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So 
so you can see she was playing low or high I was playing low it all sounded good because we were playing the same notes looks like we have a newcomer what's your name I'm Joanne <laughs> Joanne okay I'm, I'm a very newcomer. I'm just seeing if I can pick. I don't play at all, oh, so I'm just. You <laughs> just hack away out of here, so. Um, Got the bow in the correct hand. That's a good start. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I've watched a lot. My dad was a fiddle player, so. Oh, that's, good. that's great. <laughs> so we're going through some basic versions of Bottle of Cabbage Town. <laughs> um, so, on this one. Um, Fingering is a real key, and we didn't mark any fingering on here, but if anybody uh, wanted to pencil this in or pencil on later, um, measure 49 is going to use first and third fingers. Measure, the next measure, measure 50, is going to use fourth finger and second finger. That's going to take a little practice. And then back to first and third fingers on measure 49 is the same, or measure uh, 51, same as measure 49. Where it says E on measure 52, it's the first two fingers, one and two. Measure 53 goes back to the A chord, just like 49, measure uh, fingers one and three. Then the D is exactly the same as above, second and fourth fingers. The A, first and third fingers again, the E, first and second. And then we fat finger the last one with our, it should be an A and an E on that one. Um, so that one might be a little bit much to bite off right now together but if you want to join in go for it if you want to play one of the basic versions go for it but we'll just we'll just play it and you can play whatever version you want Bethany and I will play the starting on measure 49 version one two three four <laughs> This is like every uh, kind of a takeoff of everybody's dream song. Uh, measure 57 has that um, hokum bowling shuffle, they call it. So, which is um, outlawed in a lot of fiddle contests. They, they outlaw that little pattern uh, because it just kind of gets you going. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but That's why I don't participate. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it's, it's like the hook for. Um, Orange Blossom Special too. But it works pretty well in this song. So once you learn measure 49, you can jump down to measure 57 and play it very slowly. Well, mm -hmm. I play it very slowly. <laughs> 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 want you to play it very slowly? <laughs> you got to do it. Yeah. Right. So here's very slowly. <laughs> You can still hear that accent, like Bethany said earlier, is on the two and the four, and that's those are the notes we're coming over on. Now the trick with this one is to be able to switch your fingers really quickly, but you don't necessarily have to take your first and third fingers off if you have good hand position. And let's stop and take a minute to talk about that. We were going to do that right away, and we kind of forgot. But um, so we'll let Bethany kind of demonstrate some good hand position. Um, when, when you play violin or fiddle, there's a couple of things that are, are key. First of all, you want to have things lined up. You want to line up your nose, the fingerboard, the elbow, the wrist, your, your knee, your foot. So everything's just kind of in a row. That way when you... <laughs> <laughs> you can do it anyway you want. <laughs> but... Um, that way when you're bowing everything's nice and straight um, if your violin was out this way you'd have to you'd have to have a really long arm to get it or if it's like this you're gonna start to do what they call go in the ditch your road is between your fingerboard and your bridge so you want to stay in the middle of the road when you bow that that's going to give you a nice straight bow if if your violin is a little out of whack you're gonna be going in the ditch and that's not gonna be good so um, um, so anyway, in, in order to achieve that good position, a, a, a good way to do that is make what they call the map of Michigan first. So if you just, like when um, our new students, Beth and I, when we first have someone start, we'll have them make the map of Michigan like this, so your wrist is down. And 
I, I usually tell my students the heel part of your violin right here is hot. So you don't want to, if you catch yourself going up like that, you want to get it right off the butt because that's going to cause a bad position and you won't be able to <coughs> reach. So like like when we're doing the D note, if we if we were on the D in, in good position, it's no problem. But if we try, watch what happens when we get burned. Our finger's going to go down. And then what happens then is you're going to have the wrong note. So if your notes are sounding not quite right, see if you're getting burned. Uh, because that's a lot of times what's happening is you just don't have a good position. And that's not a real natural thing either. That takes some practice. It takes some doing. So it um, takes a lot of practice. Yeah. But it pays off. It pays big dividends. So in order to play, like from measure 49 on, where we have those low double strings, that requires um, good hand position, and really any song does, but especially when you're playing more complicated things, so. Okay, um, let's see. I think what we'll do is just, well, we, um, let's just play it through, and anybody can join in whatever they feel comfortable with. Any of the parts will work. So we'll start in measure 57. We'll just give it kind of a medium beat. And we'll throw the ending in too. So if you feel moved to play that, you can. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Too, probably hundreds or thousands of them. Um, we just give, give it a give it a simple one, but you could elaborate a lot on these endings. You could even go. And we were talking about that low G sharp a little bit ago. That's just what we just did. We just moved our first finger down to that G sharp and slid it right up to A just to finish it out. So, okay, so. We'll, we'll be off of our four note song in a minute, but before we are, I think we'll just play it through once. Okay. Up to speed. Shall we? Yeah, we'll think. Okay. One, two, three, four. Great job on that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. A boost in the pudding.